House of Death. This beautiful townhouse on Quiet West 10th has been called the most haunted building in New York, with as many as 22 ghosts calling it home, earning 14 West 10th Street, the sobriquet The House of Death. Mark Twain lived here from 1900 to 1901, and claimed that he himself had experienced supernatural incidents. Throughout the 20th century, 14 West 10th was the site of several gruesome incidents, including a murder-suicide, and the beating death of six-year-old Lisa Steinberg, at the hands of her adopted father, prominent attorney Joel Steinberg, in 1987. The specter of Dwayne himself, white suit and all, has been seen ascending the staircase. The Morris Dumal Mansion one of the oldest houses in Manhattan, this stately Georgian mansion in Washington Heights was built by Roger Morris, a colonel in the British Army, in 1765, it served as military headquarters for both sides of the revolution, with George Washington retreating here after the disastrous loss of the Battle of Brooklyn, in 1776. In 1810, the house was bought by Stephen Dumal and his wife Eliza, and after his suspicious death, she remarried in 1832, to a haunted figure in his own right, Aaron Burr, the former vice president, and killer of Alexander Hamilton. Since at least the 1960s, rumors of the supernatural have persisted, when a group of rowdy school children allegedly saw the ghostly visage of Eliza Jumal, who told them to quiet down before gliding away. Other sightings include a talking grandfather clock, and a Hessian soldier who's been known to emerge from paintings on the wall, Hogwarts style. The Conference House Located at the southernmost tip of Staten Island, this colonial manor was used by a loyalist Colonel Christopher Billop, as a way station for British forces during the Revolutionary War. It also hosted the unsuccessful Staten Island Peace Conference, on September 11, 1776, with Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and Edward Rutledge in attendance. In 1779, Billop suspected a 15-year-old serving girl of spying, for the rebels and allegedly killed her by throwing her down a flight of stairs, and supposedly her ghost can still be heard screaming today. As a side note, the area was also used as a Lenape Pindian burial ground, thousands of years before European contact, so take from that what you will. The Lefferts Laid Law House In Wallabout, an 1840 Greek revival home, a stone's throw away from the Brookline Navy Yard may hold a sinister secret. One December evening in 1878, resident Edward F. Smith reported hearing a knock at his door but when he went to answer, there was no one to be found. Of course, the knocking persisted, while the back doors and windows were violently rattled and banged. The unseen tormentor continued harassing Smith, until he called the police. While the cops staked out the area, someone hurled a brick through the dining room window. Despite the fact that, multiple officers were standing right outside, the New York Times later reported on the incidents and 136 Clinton Avenue became something of a hotspot for curious ghost hunters and spiritualists who held seances on the sidewalk. This prompted Smith to boldly proclaim, they won't get in here. We consider ourselves perfectly able to take care of any ghost that comes along. Twelve Gay Street Located right around the corner from bustling 6th Avenue, Gay Street is arguably one of the most picturesque blocks in New York, and the quaint brick townhouse, at number 12 is no exception. The building served as a speakeasy called, the Pirate's Den, during Prohibition and was purchased by the corrupt mayor Jimmy Walker, as a home for his mistress, Ziegfeld girl Betty Compton. Neighbors insist that, ghostly flappers and the Gay Street Phantom, a dapper gent in a cloak and trop hat, still lurk around late at night, and if that's not creepy enough, the property was later bought by Frank Paris, the creator of notorious hell puppet Howdy Doody. 